Welcome to the A-Game, here for Season 16. We're still here reporting on all of your favorite App State sports, but now we'll bring you more sports coverage than ever before, all on App TV. We have a great episode for you this week, previewing the start to the college football season and how App State fall sports started off their seasons. All this and more coming to you now on the A-Game. As I speak to incoming students, I get to see the excitement they have for this next phase of their lives. For some, they are the first in their families to go to college, and others are continuing a legacy of pursuing higher education. We know the journey through college is not always easy. Research tells us that obtaining a college education can be even more challenging for our students from underrepresented backgrounds. Appalachian Advocates is an opportunity to work with a cohort of faculty and staff who are willing to help foster a welcoming campus culture. Thank you for joining us. I'm Noah C. Cornelius, and this past weekend, the Mountaineers suffered a 63-61 loss to UNC in one of the greatest, painful, exhilarating, all of the adjectives, all of the above, in one of the greatest football games ever. And we had to come talk about it. So guys, how should we begin? Um, I'll start out. You know, like you said, it was painful. <laughs> I, we were all there. We both were on the field. You were in the booth, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was, that was so sad. It was... <laughs> But it was so good, like at the same time, like after the game ended, I, I talked to my dad, he's like, oh, that was such a tough loss. But also I was like, it was one of the greatest, obviously it might not be the greatest game in app because of the, the upset against Michigan, that'll always probably be number one. Mm -hmm. But unless they somehow beat Texas a this Saturday, which I don't know. But um, <laughs> that game though was just incredible. Probably the best one that ever happened in Kid Brewer. We'll go on later, more yeah. details. Yeah, yeah. You, you hit the nail on the head. Pretty much after the game, when we were calling it on WASU, we, it was, what did we just witness? What exactly. what just happened? Mm -hmm. Like, the result of the game meant so little because of the craziness that ensued in just the final three minutes of the game. I think there was four touchdowns in the last last three minutes of the game, and two in the last minute. It was it was insane. We got to work on two point offense, but other than that, I mean, and defense, of course. Other than that, but it, it was. It was a very fun game to be at and a call. Yeah, now you're touching at the defense. There were some plays, especially late in the fourth quarter, because there, I, I think, it was 30,000 touchdowns in the fourth quarter. <laughs> um, Appro approximately. Yeah, approximately. There was but a lot of them. There was uh, the one touchdown where I think it was third and 12. Or, um, yeah, Drake May, UNC had the ball. And Drake May gets hike, and they sent about eight um, yes. blitzers. And three receivers are all wide open on the right side of the field. And he just lobs up and just one catches it and runs for an easy touchdown. I mean, that was just – some of the defensive schemes were just so questionable, I yeah, felt like, in the end. You said it. I mean, it, to be exact, it was a, a third and nine play. We did send all eight, <laughs> and they had four receivers going. We had their other three locked up, but the running back was just so wide open in the middle of the field that, I mean, it was 
disgusting to look at. But it, it was, yeah. It's pretty disgusting. No, I was running dual option with WASU and App TV, mm-hmm. although I was doing sideline reporting with WASU. And I was, I was running all over the place. Uh, and we were figuring out technical difficulties, and I was trying to report from the sidelines. And, I mean, I saw Brent Harrington go into the injury tent, and I was like, oh, my gosh, what is happening? And I remember specifically it was the third quarter, and um, the fans were getting dejected. People were leaving. And um, App State just turned around and looked at their fans. Like, come on, y'all, come on. They, like, raised their hands up. And I told you this over the air. I was like, you know, this team has not given up. Mm-hmm. Like, they're trying to raise morale. And um, – and then the next thing I know, they score 40 points in yeah. the fourth quarter. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> an, another thing is, too, obviously, like, the game, it was, like, 20 points or 19 or something like that. It was still reachable, but the game really just felt like it was over after yeah. that third quarter. Like, true. it was definitely reachable to come back because, obviously, they did in the end. Mm-hmm. And, like, teams had done it before, especially in college football in a game that already didn't have much defense. But it just, like, something about it, it just felt so deflating. But the way – the offense just went out and responded. And Chase Bryce, I mean, I, you have to give him a shout-out. Chase okay, Bryce yeah. was fantastic. Yeah. Obviously, say what you want about the first two-point conversion try. It was a weird play. I'll go in more depth of that. Looked like he was under pressure, so he tried to get the ball out quick. And then, unfortunate with a quick turn by Davis. But, I mean, Chase Bryce threw some incredible passes. Like, the touchdown to get that chance on yeah. two-point conversion was one of the most beautiful throws I've ever seen him do in his life. It was incredible. We've heard a, a small minority of the fan base, you know, blaming the game on him when he threw 376 yards and six touchdowns. Yeah. I mean, what what are we doing here, right? Exactly, yeah. I but, was part of that minority, and I'm not <laughs> proud to say it. Uh, I really had to, like, go back and watch it over again. And then I realized we scored 40, point, 40 points in the fourth quarter. And I was like, okay, you know what? I mean, Chase Bryce has, still had to throw the ball, get us down the field to make it happen. You know, again, you, you can't. You can't get mad at a player because of missed moments like that. It, that's football. It happens. But, I mean, what is it? Six touchdowns over 300 yards? Some about player of the week? Shoot, he should have been NCAA player of the week. What? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. But, no, for real, like, he had he had an incredible game, and I don't think he gets enough credit. I know last year, my first semester on the A game, I'm like, man, this guy's horrible. Sorry, Chase. <laughs> I, 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 do, I do remember you some do of that. Remember? I, I yeah. do clearly remember some of that. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was a little <laughs> bit hard on Chase Bryce, but, I mean, the whole team just put their whole heart and soul into that game in the fourth quarter. Chase Bryce, Nate Noel, Dietrich Harrington had a few good Peoples runs. Had a good Peoples, quarter, I yeah. mean, the whole – Miller Gibbs, <laughs> out of nowhere – well, not out of nowhere, you know, but he yeah. comes from a football family, so is it really out of nowhere? But the point is, like, that was a whole yeah. really good game. It was just that fourth quarter, I mean, I don't even think you can really put it into words. Uh, what happened, it is just nuts, but mm. the way that team just, like, had the morale to come back was incredible, like, enough to do that, but it's just – I mean, yeah, that game was incredible. It, it was really nice to see the – one thing I feel like – app. I was glad they kind of like it was they were trying it and it wasn't working but they weren't trying it too much to where it was a bad play calling was the run game the run game wasn't really going much until the fourth quarter like everything Mm -hmm. basically in the fourth quarter Mm -hmm. but it really wasn't working and then finally like it got open and Harrington was the one to get that going like he had one drive I think he had four carries and what was it Jeff like 68 yards yeah yeah, Yeah, five five for 48 yeah sorry to Mm -hmm. be wrong but um you know go exact on the numbers there but and then Peoples got the fantastic run where he just hmm. breaks through and gets a touchdown right in front of me. The coolest thing ever. That was <laughs> insane. But, like, the hype, too, after he scored that touchdown, it really felt like it was like, oh, App State can, like, win this game. Like, it really felt like that. And I really thought they would. But, yeah. No, I, I thought that they were going to win it, too. I mean, you know, the energy going into it. I remember I was standing behind the end zone for the first two-point conversion. And I was like, man, he's got a hot hand. We were going for two. I thought it was a good call. I thought it was ballsy. Because, like, you know, you're going to give the ball back to Drake May. I don't even think it was much of a scared it, thing. It was the correct call. It, it was, was the correct call. Because they would have lost in overtime. I yes. believe that. Yes. That, Drake May was too hard. Drake though. May's arm, like, he was on fire. Like, his arm was literally just Ghost Rider. Because his arm was on fire. He was just like, what, what, what? No, <laughs> so, like, they went for the two-point conversion. And I was standing in the end zone. And I saw Deshaun Davis get open. I'm like, this is it. This is it. And <laughs> it went right through his hands. I, I just sunk down. And, I mean, um, there was a video of, um, of a North Carolina um, social media person took a video of it on social media. And I was standing <laughs> on the sideline. And a player runs past me. And you can see me <laughs> for like a split second. And I was like, I felt so dejected. But, I yeah. mean, just, mm, man, you know, standing in the yeah. end zone witnessing that. Mm, that hurts. It, it was Noah on Noah crime. It was Noah Taylor on the UNC defense who ran right past you after saving the game for North Carolina. 
that, uh, that you know, put you in in the spotlight. But I'm never gonna forget that. Man. Yeah, that, that hurts. He yeah. was like, shh, shh. So, I'm like. The funniest thing was too. I remember recording the highlight, and I went to rewatch after the game, and instantly just after like the ball dropped, I just remember like crouching down and just stopping the camera. You probably, I think you saw yeah. it, Jeff. Instantly the camera just goes down. I, it was the definition of heartbreak in a game where they're always like sports are heartbreaking. That's what that game really was. And then too with the onside kick, where I mean players got crushed on it, and then but then App State gets the ball back and marches down the field, okay, no yeah. problems and gets another chance. But then I feel like we have to talk about this. They run essentially, I think it was, the same exact play. Yes, it was. Yeah. Why? I don't, like, I, uh, yeah. Jeff, well, I'll hand it to you because I need some thoughts on this. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> it's funny because when Chase Bryce was at Clemson, they played at North Carolina in 2019. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And North Carolina had two chances at two-point conversions in that game, and they ran the same play twice, uh. and it got stopped the second time. For them to lose, yeah, of course. And now we come back. So we just gave it right back. Twenty twenty-two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chase Bryce is the quarterback of App State. They run the same play twice, and North Carolina stuffs it out the second time. Just got to get a little more creative, I guess, on the second go around. Which is like again, it's kind of the scapegoat thing. It's tough to you know blame anyone on that. Because yeah. Mm-hmm. Kevin Barbe, up to that point, the offensive coordinator for App State, mm-hmm. called. A glorious game. He did. It was incredible. And I and it's funny, I feel like I'm like a hypocrite right now after saying like, <laughs> oh, look at the defense. But that thing is you're just gonna focus on the offense. It's just natural. I just think that's how it's gonna go. But I mean, the defense was just there were some moments where it was like, How are they getting so open? Mm-hmm. It felt like every time Drake May touched the ball, there was maybe like I don't know, it maybe one error, the fumble where it was like a little weird the way the ball yeah. came out. But that was about it. otherwise not. Drake May was the best quarterback, I think, in the nation that Real weekend. Fun. And I, honestly, I think he probably played like the best quarterback in the nation. And I think Chase Bryce could have been like in the top five conversation yeah. this week. But it's just unfortunate because Drake May was number one. He played that good. Like He was fantastic. Every throw, I felt like, was perfect. He was able to get out of the pocket, no problem. Get extra yards if he needed to. He did everything flawlessly. And while we talk about Chase Bryce so much, the receivers were a question mark coming into this game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And... Fantastic. Me and Lucas, the guys who were calling the game for WASU, mm-hmm. went to practice a couple of times the week leading up to the game. He said, this Deshaun Davis guy, I mean, he can get open. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Whoever is covering him, he's going to find a way to get open. He had six catches for 72 yards and a touchdown. Mm-hmm. A couple other receivers stepped up. Christian Horn had a touchdown. Caden Robinson had that last um, touchdown before the second two-point yeah. fail. Mm-hmm. But those guys, you know, they had a lot of doubters coming into this season, and I think you know, they looked really, really good against an ACC defense. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about the game a little bit more before we start talking about the future. Yeah. Um, you know what this game reminded me of? You know the 2016 National Championship in which it was UNC versus Villanova. And oh, UNC, I remember that. Villanova fan. I remember yeah, that. yeah, of course. Yeah. Mr. I remember Philly, that. Mr. Philly over here. Anyways. Um, and then UNC, you know, over there. Yeah. Um, so, so during the game, um, UNC had to score in order to stay in the game to get to overtime. And UNC hit this crazy, crazy shot. And everybody Marcus was like, Page. yeah, Marcus Page. It was such a crazy shot. They're like, oh, man, the game's over. Next play, Chris Jenkins' three-point shot. I, I say that because this game reminded me so much about it because people always seem to forget about the Marcus Page shot, but they remember Chris Jenkins. App State scored 40 points in the fourth quarter. Yeah, look at my little hand motions. Yeah, they scored 40 points. I don't know if people are going to remember that because all they're going to see is the scoreboard. Like, oh, man. But, but the diehards will. The analytics yeah. the analytics people will be like, man, look at this 40-point quarter. YouTube, YouTube compilation will be like the greatest football finishes of all time. Actually, hold on. One more, th- one more thing. I, yeah, I know. Keep I thought, go, go okay, for it. Go for it. You, give me, you're, you're, give, fired you're up. letting me keep going? Okay. Well, <laughs> nah, so all I was going to say was um, this was great for the city of Boone. Um, Definitely. Commerce-wise, yeah, we're a small town. Yeah, we talk about spacing and parking. But the money this game brought in, I mean, unreal. I mean, the ABC store brought in $80,000 off of this one game. The the impact this game is going to have on recruitment, like, they're going to be like, hey, we scored 40 points in the fourth quarter. We almost won 60, like, we almost won the game. They're going to be like, hey, four-star recruit, you want to come here? You want to... You want to have more big games like this? You want to get yourself three touchdowns in the fourth quarter? Get your name out there? Hey, this is this is this is a big game when you look at it from the outside looking in for App State's future. And for some other perspective on the game, it of course it sold out in July. It yeah. set a record for attendance. I mm-hmm. think it was almost five thousand more than the second most for a, a game at App State. I think Wake Forest in twenty seventeen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And then, of course, the 40 points in the fourth quarter is insane. That was, I think it was the second most point combined points for a for a college football game I think in a it was single two quarter. Off from the yeah, yeah. Yeah. it was yeah, crazy. behind some game between Navy and North Texas in 2007, and it was the first first game ever to end in a 63-61 final score. Think about how long college football is going on. Yeah, it's and, and that's the first years. time that it's had that crazy. score. And yeah. I mean, the game just overall was completely crazy it still kind of looking back on it still recovering it exactly was, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's hard to process like what <laughs> you just witnessed on so, friday because yeah, like yeah. now we're going to or a saturday and now we're going to texas a&m and it's like i feel like you can't even rest because texas a&m is arguably uh, like maybe the game in boone like the unc game will be bigger but on the national scale this game is way bigger texas ESPN a&m too. is yeah texas yeah. a&m is a national championship contender this year Six i mean yeah. debatably they are and they are a fantastic team they might be one of those more off-season overhyped teams that people say they are i mean that's always a conversation with some sec teams but they are still such a good team so now it feels like the app state team like they can't even rest and com- like comprehend this they got to just move on instantly mm-hmm. and start planning for this so it'd be interesting to see that response and i think they've moved on you know yeah. unc is a great game but truth is they weren't ranked if you really really want to get your name out there you go down to Texas A&M and put on a show and try to win. I'm not going to say win because I was looking at it this morning. Texas A&M are two touchdown favorites. That's a, that's, that's, that's a pretty insurmountable lead. But, hey, you know, it's college football. Anything can happen, right? It's almost like the Carolina game didn't, didn't work in App State's favor going into this A&M game because usually when App State plays these big games, they fly under the radar. You know, their opponent doesn't know much about them. But now that they've played this game, You've heard Jimbo Fisher in his press conference mm-hmm. leading up to the game Crazy. this week. He has yeah. so much yeah, respect man. for this program, yeah. and he knows that his guys have to be ready. Yeah, it, it was great to hear the praise and stuff, too. I mean, that was awesome to hear. And also see the respect between UNC and App State after the game. That was, like, fantastic here. But, it's it, like you said, it's kind of unfortunate because I was hoping maybe Texas A&M will be like, oh, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's App State. It's like, yeah, sure, they beat Michigan, obviously. Everyone knows that. And it just had, like, a, they just, like, maybe beat UNC in, like, a, you know, whatever game or lost in a whatever game. But now it's like, oh, they had the craziest game possibly ever in college football history. Yeah. Now you're definitely going to pay attention to that and what this offense can bring. Because the way Bryce played, you're going to have to keep an eye for that. you got to keep an eye for that running back trio, Harrington, um, Peoples, and Noel. I mean, that's going to yeah. be important. And like you said, the wide receivers shocked us. They played incredible. Yeah. And that's going to be something they're going to be looking at. And then I think App State is now on a streak of seven consecutive games against Power 5 opponents where – the final score was within seven points, mm-hmm. and that includes against two top ten teams with Penn State and Tennessee yeah, were the, Tennessee. those two games. Mm-hmm. So you can never count out this team going into Saturday. Don't yeah, count us out. Can't. No, no, no. Sorry, that's basketball. <laughs> but, I mean, it's true. Never count yeah. out App State. I mean, shoot. The Tar Heel guys, the Tar Heel players on the sideline after they won, they were like, yeah, we won. Then they were, like, bragging. It's like, you almost lost to us. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. So. I mean, yeah, it was a crazy game, but I mean, looking for the Texas A&M game, definitely, but it's, it's just going to like, it's just, I mean, I don't see App State topping this game no. for, I, I mean, it's got to be like 10 years, I mean, at least, right? I mean, I don't know if they ever can. Like, I know they, they lost, but it was still just like Such crazy a, atmosphere. Yeah, so it's going to be, especially looking at the rest of the home games, you're like, what can rival this game? So it's yeah. going to be tough. And yeah, I, w- I would say a lifetime, but we do have NC State coming in a couple of years. That's true. That's true. That is going to be crazy. That's true. So maybe, maybe, maybe we can see some top it. But in terms of just general craziness of the game, then yeah, I mean, it's going to be impossible to, yeah. to beat what happened on Saturday. Definitely. I'm going to be like Molly Karim and call an audible. What do you think the score is going to be of the Texas A&M versus App State game? Prediction. Whew. Um, I really thought about this, but. Um, I'm gonna go 42 to 28 Texas A&M. I uh, I don't know. I, I just the way <laughs> I, I saw our defense play. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, if you let up, I feel like I'm being almost optimistic in a way. If you let up 63 to UNC, and then you're going on the road to College Station, one of the toughest atmospheres <clears throat> in college football history, it's up True. there. I, letting in 42, I feel like it's a little mm-hmm. generous in a way, but 42 28. Yeah, but I do think the North Carolina offense is better than the Texas A&M offense, which isn't. That's, yeah, that's it's not yeah, shouldn't that's be true. too crazy of a take, but you know, Texas A&M's offense seems better than they are because they have that number next to their name. But regardless, our defense at App State did not look good at all. Yeah, and I still think we'll uh, give up a fair number of points. 
think I'll say 38-17 A&M. Okay. This is where my score prediction skills get absolutely exposed. Um, I'm just going to keep it real with you. I kind of rely on like gut and heart feelings with this. I know Texas A&M is six ranked overall, and I know App State is not ranked, but I feel like it's going to be close. I just, I, I don't know. You look at a Miami, not Texas A&M. I mean, you just saw the North Carolina game, not Texas A&M. I, I got to go with my heart, man. I feel like I feel like it's going to be like a... Give us the nearest one. Let's hear it now. The, near, <laughs> the nearest one. I think Texas A&M is going to win by 10. I just I think that they're going to get out to a lead early. App State's going to score a couple touchdowns, try and get in close, and then Texas a and is going uh, to ice the game and go win by 10. Yeah, I, I, I think that's fair prediction. But, I mean, going with the, um, the thing you said about the offense, that's definitely true. I mean, UNC has a fantastic offense. They really do. And we didn't even see it in full capacity as well was mm-hmm. another thing, but... I mean, Texas A&M, just in that atmosphere, I obviously we played in the big house and stuff, but, I mean, college, this is just up there, and that's just yeah. going to be such a... Uh, it's it's, it's about, awesome. it's close to 100,000 people in there. So. Yeah, <laughs> we just played in 40,000, we're like, that's an insane atmosphere. <laughs> that's and then an you're, entire then you're city. Doubling Holy that. cow. So, yeah, exactly. It, it's pretty different on, on yeah. scope. Bring earplugs. Hopefully their eardrums don't get blown out, right? Yeah. Oh, my I, I hope not. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it'll be a fun one. I'll see how it goes, though. Well, guys, before we get too off track, that wraps up our App State versus UNC recap special segment, whatever you want to call it, yeah. Mr. Producer. Um, stay tuned for more episodes of the A-Game and follow us. Watch App TV and A-Game Sports. And WASU.sports on Instagram. Yeah, you got to yeah. go ahead and plug your side. Yeah, we'll be doing collaborations all, yeah. all, all fall long. We already did one, and we'll keep posting that as well. But yep. Yeah, thank you for tuning in, and let's see if the Nears take down the Aggies somehow on Saturday. <laughs> To a place where you can grow. A place to be heard. And take a closer look. A place where you can crush it. And push yourself. A place to find your voice. This place rocks. And rolls. A place where you can get out. Wow! A place you'll never forget. So where is this place? Let me show you. Life is a journey. We're told that there are mountains and valleys before us. A mountaineer trudges through. Where others see an obstacle, a mountaineer sees an opportunity. A mountaineer climbs tomorrow's mountains today. So what is a mountaineer? A mountaineer is you. My name is Melissa Weddle, and I'm Department Chair of Recreation Management and Physical Education at Appalachian State University. We offer two degree granting programs, one in Recreation Management with a focus in Outdoor Experiential Education, Recreation and Park Management, and Commercial Recreation and Tourism. Our second degree granting program in Health, Physical Education, and Coaching offers teacher certification for public schools in health and physical education. You can get a minor or certificate in coaching. We are the front porch to the Beaver College of Health Science, where our focus is on quality of life, wellness, and physical activity. We're located in the beautiful mountains of Boone, North Carolina. So come join us, check out our website, or take a class. Formula One returned from its summer break in the beautiful country of Belgium for the Belgian Grand Prix at Circuit de spa Frankershaw. With many drivers taking grid penalties before the start of the Grand Prix, Carlos Sainz Jr. started at pole position with Sergio Perez starting next to him on the front row. World champion Max Verstappen started 15th with grid penalties, but this didn't matter for him as he went on to cruise to another easy victory. On lap one, two former world champions, Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso, collided, causing Hamilton to retire from the race. Still, Alonso was able to continue on and finish in fifth place. Hamilton, after the race, took accountability for the collision between him and Alonso. The Formula One drama started before this past weekend's race with McLaren Formula One team deciding to split up with driver Daniel Ricciardo to leave the team at the end of this 2022 season. It is rumored that McLaren will pursue reigning Formula 2 champion Oscar Piastri, 
for their second driver's seat alongside star Lando Norris. Piastri is currently the reserve driver for the Alpine team. Alpine announced during the summer break that Piastri was promoted to second seat driver alongside Esteban Ocon after Fernando Alonso signed with Aston Martin, leaving Alp Alpine after this season. In a shocking twist, Piastri announced on Twitter that he will not be racing for Alpine in the 2023 season after the team announced that he would. This story is still developing to this day, and we will continue to update you on it as we get all the details. The Little League World Series has come to an end this summer with Hawaii claiming the championship by beating Curacao 13-4 in only four innings due to a mercy rule. This was one of the most dominant runs in Little League World Series history, with Hawaii outscoring its opponents 60-5 to throughout the entire tournament. Switching gears to soccer, the recent start of the English Premier League has been anything but normal. Preseason title competitors Liverpool FC were able to bounce back after suffering a 2-1 loss to rival Manchester United. Liverpool had a stunning 9-0 victory against AFC Bournemouth. Title favorites Manchester City got a comeback win after falling behind 2-0 in the first half, but still got the 4-2 win. Currently, Arsenal leads the early charge for the title with 12 points, with Manchester City closing the gap with only being two points away. Taking a look at other soccer leagues around Europe in the German Bundesliga, heavy title favorites Bayern Munich are currently tied in points with FC Union Berlin at 10 to start the season. Over in France, the all-star team at PSG with stars Lionel Messi, Neymar, and Kylian Mbappe are currently tied at 10 points for the lead with Marcel and RC Lenz. We are getting closer and closer to arguably the greatest sporting event in the world, the 2022 FIFA World Cup. Well, you're so right, Ali, and in this World Cup, the USA will finally be competing and they will be in Group B playing against Iran, Wales, and rivals England. I can't wait for that one, Noah. But the World Cup this year will be hosted in Qatar and played from November 20th to the final game being played on December 18th. Life is a journey. We're told that there are mountains and valleys before us. A mountaineer trudges through. Where others see an obstacle, a mountaineer sees an opportunity. A mountaineer climbs tomorrow's mountains today. So what is a mountaineer? A mountaineer is you. To a place where you can grow. A place to be heard. And take a closer look. A place where you can crush it. And push yourself. A place to find your voice. This place rocks. And rolls. A place where you can get out. Way out! A place you'll never forget. So where is this place? Let me show you. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the A-Game and make sure to keep following us for all your sports news. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the A-Game Sports and to check us out on YouTube at AppTV.